I'm David Laguerre, and I have lived in Monterey County for the last 40 some odd years. I came from Southern California where I grew up. After my schooling was done, I went to the Art Center College of Design in Los Angeles and, and then was drafted into the Army. And as soon as I was finished with those things, I moved to Monterey County, inspired most particularly by Robinson Jeffers and John Steinbeck, whom I had read. I actually began showing in New York before I moved to Monterey County, and uh, I had been uh, I had a, a gallery that was exhibiting my works there, and have had almost continuously since then. And so, for me, moving to Monterey County was was a, a place where I could do my work. And I I, I moved to Big Sur, and uh, that was a place that I was most interested in. It was a, a, a huge contrast from growing up in the Los Angeles area. And uh, I moved up here to have that kind of wildness that was here, that kind of nature. So being here was, oh, you know, for a young guy making art, living that life in Big Sur was, uh, was a, a wonderful experience and a really deep and rich experience. And I have to say it was deepened and rich, richened by somebody like Robinson Jeffers. I first learned about Robinson Jeffers from, his, uh, from the book Not Man Apart, and it was actually photographs by a variety of different photographers and poetry by Robinson Jeffers. And Jeffers, who moved to Carmel in, I think, 1917, lived out on Carmel Point when there were no trees out there. And uh, Jeffers, Jeffers was interesting in a couple of ways. I mean, I, I don't really believe in being a local artist. I believe in working with the world. And this is something that Jeffers did while he was writing poetry out on Carmel Point. He was, he was publishing from New York. He was uh, producing, I mean, he was, he was having plays of his produced in New York. He was really, really famous in 1931. He was on the cover of Time magazine, if you can imagine, living without a telephone and without electricity out on Carmel Point and having your, having your photograph on the front of Time magazine. He was an extraordinary man and a really interesting poet who, who not only w w talked about this local area, he, he talked about it in, in interna international terms. I mean, he talked about it in mythological ways. And this is another thing that I think really has inspired me over the years is the fact that he took something which was local and he made it universal. Oftentimes people ask me about my work and, and what kind of paintings that I make and I tell them that I'm a classicist. And, and well, what does that mean to be a classicist and especially a classicist who is working in an area like this where most artists have been, uh, have been most interested in the, in the landscape? Being a classicist means that I've, I've paid particularly attention to Gro Greek and Roman mythology and uh, I have tried in many ways to apply that kind of mythology to the landscape that we have here, or I should say I've tried to, I've used the landscape to apply that to Greek and Roman mythology, to the stories of the ancients. And, and uh, it gives this, this area a kind of a richness. And I would say also that the fact that this is a Mediterranean climate, we are Mediterranean, we're part of Spain, part of the great Roman Empire, be connected to th those Latin languages and all of the literature that goes with Roman uh, times and, and in addition to Greek literature. So one of the reasons I think that I'm very interested in the light is because I grew up in Manhattan Beach in Southern California and I probably spent too much time at the beach when I was a kid. And uh, it would seem that that was wasted time, but I think what I was really doing was soaking up that sunshine. And it has always been interesting to me f to make paintings that were using sunshine itself. And uh, I, from, from the first 
paintings that I was making, all, all plein air paintings outdoors uh, that I was selling in New York. Um, but it was, it was absolutely necessary for me to be outdoors working in the direct sunlight. And that's carried on in my work ever since, even though most particularly now I, I use photographs that I take outdoors and bring into the studio and work from those in the studio now. There have been so many wonderful artists who have worked here, William Richel, Armin Hansen, uh, August Gay, so many artists who have been here and worked, uh, E. Charlton Fortune. Uh, and so there is this incredibly rich heritage, and it's an unusual place in the sense that so many other towns and, and villages across the United States um, don't have this kind of attraction for artists that the Monterey Peninsula has had. I mean, the, the physical beauty of the land is just extraordinary, and this is why artists have settled here. All of the combinations of sea and rivers and rolling hills and mountains are tremendously attractive, but they also have a deeper meaning. I've written about the pastures of heaven, which is where I live, which was the name of a book by John Steinbeck, and uh, it's the it's a, a pseudonym for uh, Corral de Tierra. And the whole idea of the pastoral, of using the landscape as a metaphor for this combination of, of dualities, let's say, which is, which is what it is in classicism. I mean, the basic, the, the, the basic uh, uh, element of classicism is this kind of duality, a duality between the, the Dionysian chaos and Apollonian order. That's the, one of the very basic tenets of that. Well, the pastoral landscape is a between landscape. It's between the city, it's between the urban area and the wild. And it's, it's, a, it's a landscape which is used. But that's also a metaphor for the passage between life and death, and there are all kinds of implications on that, uh, about that with it. And this is something that, that I've tried to use in my work, to use the landscape for deeper meanings, to understand the, the deeper implications of our landscape, of the people who've lived here, uh, and John Steinbeck did this so well. And I feel like I'm one of the people who has um, at least tried to um, utilize this landscape in an internationalist sort of a sense. The landscape is for me a sacred space. There are so many beautiful areas, especially if you know the time of day to go and appreciate them and the time of the year and the way that the landscape changes. John Steinbeck writes about it so well, as did Jeffers, about the changing of the seasons and watching the different plants came up just this morning. It's the, I, I saw the first lupin up on our hill, the first lupin blooming. And these, it's like a very, very special thing that happens when you see the, the, the first flowers of wildflowers of spring. Um, so it can be a it can be a, a, an extremely rich experience. I was out on Point Lobos last week and and uh, during a storm. And it's fantastic to be out there when the waves are crashing against the rocks and the sky is, is lowering and gray. And, and you find these sorts of image paintings in both Jeffers and John Steinbeck. I certainly do hope to be able to continue to work here. It's always a great temptation when I'm in New York to um, live there for a period of time. But I always keep coming back here and I've always thought that that, that working in New York, or I mean at least having my work shown in New York and, and constantly thinking about New York and what New York is going to be interested in, working in with New York and living in Monterey County is just a great combination. It's, 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 that, it's, that, it's that duality.